How's it going everybody? Um, Gadoosh here and I'm back again with another Blender tutorial. So this time I'm going to be uh, creating an updated tutorial on the um, how to convert 2D uh, meshes, in, I mean 2D images into 3D mesh in Blender. So um, I've been getting a lot of comments on uh, that one video that I did um, that had a lot of views, um, the Assassin's Creed one, uh, which will sh I'm going to be making an updated version of that um, software because I've been getting a lot of comments saying that I needed to stop moving the camera a lot <laughs> even though that's uh, what you usually do when you do 3D modeling because you want to make sure that everything looks nice but I uh, also have been receiving comments on screencast keys I'll definitely make sure to enable that um, when I'm doing my tutorials or time lapses for uh, next time okay so um, right now I'm going to be showing you how to convert a 2D uh, image into a 3D mesh and blender I'm going to be showing you a new way to do that as well so um, you know we just don't stick into just one way of doing things it's always good to have multiple ways of doing this also um, sorry I'm talking really fast um, I need to make sure the tutorial doesn't last long so yeah so let's get into it alright so the first thing that you want to do uh, I'm going to be showing you is the old way of doing it which is pretty much um, looking for your uh, image file so for example I just went on Google and searched for ha uh, heart black and white and a lot of different uh, variations came up uh, you're gonna want to make sure that your image is black and white so the conversion process isn't disrupted by um, by uh, you know putting in a colorful image you, you want to have a high contrast so the software will clearly understand what shapes that you want and what shapes that you don't um, okay so I selected this one because this one has a lot of uh, you know distinct patterns and everything um, there you can just uh, do what I did and search for uh, search on Google for uh, uh, heart black and white and then you'll find it here uh, also I clicked on a view page and uh, this person made it uh, Anna to my I'm not even gonna butcher her name I'm just gonna name her Anna so if you like it make sure to buy it it's just uh, it's only $12 um, it's really beautiful if you want to use it for anything after you buy it you can uh, I'm just gonna use it for the uh, purpose of this tutorial alright so uh, what you then want to do is just uh, once you have the image downloaded what you want to do is go to an online conversion website so personally I use um, Conversio um, and they are pretty good they do amazing online conversions but the problem is you you can't exceed the limit of 10 conversion uh, minutes per day was this what it says and and you have to sign up to have more uh, continue using their services but you don't actually need to sign up to do it if you're a guest you can do 10 conversions which is pretty much what I think would be more than enough um, I've already converted this uh, image into an SVG so uh, the next thing that you can do is just that uh, you have to go to uh, fire user preferences uh, and then go to SVG and once you have that, uh, just make sure that you selected um, <coughs> uh, the SVG format, uh, SVG 1.1. Uh, note that for later. Uh, and then what you want to do is just go to import and then import scalable vector graphics and then go to where you saved your SVG file and then just import it. So once you have it imported, you can see that uh, the beautiful heart pattern that um, Anna created is now in my computer for me to play around with it as much as I want. So I'm just going to press shift control alt c why is the screencast keys off All right, I'm just going to enable that again and then shift control alt c and then origin to geometry I joined everything by pressing control j um, and then and then you can do whatever you want to with this um, you can go to the curves panel and you can extrude it um, uh, you can you know add depth to it add resolutions to it and showing me that it has almost 113,000 faces, which is a lot. So it's bugging up my computer. So for now, I'm just going to put it down and just leave it where it is. So what I normally do is I usually just um, convert this into a mesh. Uh, so if you want to do that, inst instead of ha having it be a curve, you can turn it into a mesh. And then you can use that mesh to, uh, you know, in your renders. So I think that would be a lot easier than having uh, curves. Curves is good for editing and, you know, getting those nice round shapes um, but usually when you want to render you want to turn everything into a curve so I mean into a mesh so uh, I'm gonna press alt C and then go to mesh uh, from curve meta surf text and then if you were to go to edit mode you see there's a ton of uh, unnecessary polygons here you want to select everything and remove doubles um, where is it okay uh, where did it go to mesh tools and then remove doubles all right, so you can see that it almost removed like 2,500 uh, vertices, which is a ton, um, and then it decreased the polys from 113,000 to 35,000, which is really useful. 
Um, and then what you want to do, what I do usually, if you want to subdivide your um, your mesh, you shouldn't do this. But what I do, usually when you import SV uh, vectors into Blender, you, you're not going to use them for um, you know character details. You're probably going to use them for like ornaments that don't really require 30,000 faces, 30,000 polys, which is completely unnecessary if you're just, just going to be sitting there uh, doing nothing but just looking pretty. Um, so what, what I usually do is just limited dissolve and that will get rid of a lot of faces, um, a lot of polys, um, which is really good. Um, as you can see, it's decreased everything to 208 because I'm not going to use this to, I'm not going to subdivide it first of all, and I'm not going to be using it as, um, I don't know, some sort of animated uh, a tool that's like mushy or whatever is I'm not going to use it more than just like uh, a prop so just uh, now you can see that it has almost uh, 16,000 16, polygons which is not bad it's a lot better than the first one um, I'm just going to select everything and remove doubles again and then limited dissolve again and then just go back to object mode all right, so this is one way of importing um, your 2D uh, image into Blender, and this is the way that I showed in the last tutorial with Assassin's Creed. Um, but today, I'm also going to show you a different way of doing this, uh, and which is also my preferred way, uh, and that is doing it through Illustrator. So Adobe Illustrator is a vertex uh, graphic software that you can use to create uh, amazing things. Usually people use it to create logos and, uh, and usually people use it to create, uh, uh, you know, artworks. But um, it's, uh, it's very good if you know how to use it and it's not really hard to get to use it uh, well. You just have to know, you know, spend time with it and then you'll learn how to do really awesome stuff using it so I would definitely recommend Adobe Illustrator um, you know, because that's pretty much an industry standard when it comes to vectors just like how uh, Photoshop is pretty much the number one uh, photo editing software even though GIMP is there I know about GIMP but you know usually people in the industry don't use GIMP they use Photoshop um, because it has a lot more capabilities than GIMP even though GIMP is catching up obviously I mean I wouldn't be using Blender if I didn't support open source but you know uh, they still have to. They still have to catch up. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Anyways, um, so uh, once you have your vector software open, you can be anything that you want to. You can create your own vectors. So personally, I created this. This is uh, Aku from Samurai Jack. He's one of my favorite villains. Um, this is one of the scenes where he talks to the Scotsman, and then uh, I just took a screenshot of that off of YouTube and then uh, imported it onto Illustrator and then created this vector. So what I'm going to be doing is just using this as my reference. Uh, I'm going to um, uh, save it as an SVG file and then import it to Blender. So what you want to do is just press Save As and then uh, go to File, Save As, and then select the SVG. I've already saved it as an SVG, so I don't have to open it again. And then what you want to do is just import it into Blender. So uh, uh, select everything, I'm just going to select everything and then delete everything. And then go to File, um, Import, and then Scalable Vector Graphics. Go to the folder that you saved it as and then open it. And as you can see, it has imported it inside. And I've already, I'm not going to go to the, uh, I'm going to go into detail because I've already done this uh, before. I'm just going to uh, open the file that I've already finished. Um, and then go to uh, 3D view. So as you can see here, all I did was just uh, take all the vectors and then put in uh, materials in them so you can see them in the viewport. Since I'm going to be rendering this from the top view, the eyebrows can be floating, so I don't really mind that. It's just going to be a flat 2D image. So, all right, so that's a different way of importing um, SVG files into Blender if you're going to create your own SVG, your own vector files and then you want to import it into Blender instead of like, you know, going, creating your own images using Photoshop, using Illustrator or other uh, vector software is a lot better and a lot more customizable for you uh, in the end. All right, so that's everything for today. Um, thank you for watching. I hope this time I wasn't too fast for you and I hope this updated version helps a lot of people who had trouble with the previous Assassin's Creed tutorial. 
Um, if you have anything that you want to show me or if you have anything, any problems that you have encountered while uh, following my steps, put it down in the comments below. And I'll be sure to help you out. If you have any uh, recommendations for future tutorials, put it down there as well. And um, if you have any, uh, you know, gripes because people like complaining all the time, <laughs> just put it down in the comments below. Um, and uh, thank you for watching and um, see you in the next tutorial.